All right. So we have another phonemic awareness question involving phoneme blending. And I got this one from an Illinois exam. Uh, this, is a, this is a new exam that came out recently in the last year. And I thought I'd include it. You know, uh, hopefully you're starting to see right now, hey, these, these exam questions from Massachusetts and Texas and California and Illinois, they're looking very similar. Yes? So you may want to take a look at some of these exams outside of your state, these Pearson exams, the ones that I'm giving you and that mentioning and highlighting in the class, because you never know. This, this is pretty, this is overlapping content. It's the questions and the style of the questions and the content of the questions is very similar. So you might want to take a look at some of those, okay? But I'm going to, I want you to start. I want you to take a minute. I want you to read this question, okay, on blending phonemes, all right? Take a moment now. I'll, I'll freeze and we'll talk about it. And what you're trying to do is build your database of scenarios, right? So, so you may know what phonemic blending is. That's fine. But now we want to build that scenario base with questions so that you can recognize the concept within a scenario faster on the day of the test, okay? So read this question, please. Uh, freeze me now. Unfreeze. I'm going to read it here. It says that a reading teacher is working with a small group of first grade students. Oh, wait a second. First grade students? Feels like we're going up in the grades. We, we said uh, kindergarten, right, is what? Five to six. Um, Pre-K would be er maybe earlier. Pre-K pre could be earlier than five to six. Um, first grade would be after five to six. So we'll say, I guess, six to seven. Could be old. Some kids could be older, but we have this six to seven range. So we have this six to seven range. I'm going to put down here seven. Okay, six to seven range. I'll say we're then with a child that's seven years old. Okay, so it says here, a reading teacher is working with a small group of first graders or seven-year-olds. The teacher orally asks questions such as, what word is s-i-t? And what word is ba a j the teacher, the students respond orally. This approach is, is likely to facilitate the students emerging literacy primarily. That took a lot to say. <laughs> this approach is likely to facilitate the child, the students emergent literacy primarily in which of the following ways? Well, well, what are they doing? Well, what is the teacher doing? The teacher is providing a prompt and they're taking the, their prompt is a word that has been segmented into its sounds. So we have the s, i, uh, t, right? So they're segmenting this word as, as a word that's been segmented, s, i, t, right? It doesn't mean anything. It's like, what the heck is s, i, t? But the child has to take those sounds and they have to blend it together to get to sit. Yes? Sit. Sit does not sound like s it. I mean, it is slightly, but you have to blend them together to get the actual pronunciation. Sit, yes? So in this case right here, when we see a child take this and turn it into this, they're demonstrating their ability to do phonemic blending. Okay, so let's look at the answer choices here. It says here, uh, this approach, this I guess this approach or this activity, how is it helping them with their with future reading and writing? Well, what? It's giving them practice with phonemic blending. Child needs to be able to blend all the sounds they hear in a word in order to properly identify it, right? Uh, they can't they can't uh, read words like s it. It's going to take too long to get through the process, and they're not going to recognize it. So this is a phonemic blending. Now it's not, uh, it says, but it says, how's it going to help them encourage oral language? It, it does. It is helping them with oral language. That's not necessarily wrong. Um, but it's just not the best answer by laying the foundation of phoneme identity. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that, you know, you're not asking them to identify an individual phoneme. So that's not really it. Um, how about this? Give them instruction to do letter sound correspondence. Notice that there are no letters in this scenario. It's all spoken words. It's, a, it's an approach, an activity that is done with no letters, right? 
So you're not really doing letter sound correspondence instruction. Okay, team, so when you do these questions, right, what you're trying to do is be like, okay, this is the big concept. And this scenario matches up with this is like my friend and this is like, you know, you're trying to recognize this here matches up with my friend blending phonemes. Okay. And this is from number 13 on that Illinois test. Let's take a, a closer look at this test real quick. This one actually has a some rationale that's good. So if you if you do take a look at this test here, there's not that many questions, but if you do, you can read over the rationale and it will explain why the answer is A, okay? All right, uh, onwards and upwards. Let's keep going.